Brethren, let us stand for our prayer. Our merciful and loving Father, we are so thankful, our Father, that you bless your servants with the opportunity to come before your holy presence, to thank you for the many blessings that you continue to grant unto your servants. We know, our Father, that oftentimes we are not worthy of your blessings, but yet, our Father, you keep on blessing your children, and we thank you. We ask your Father to please grant unto your servants more faith, more understanding, so that we may be able to serve you in truth and in spirit. We pray, our Father, that you would look in all, all of the households of your children. There are many of your children that are suffering this evening. Some are suffering from calamities. Some are suffering from illness. Some are suffering from persecution. And Father, some are in jail, but we know, our Father, that you are a merciful Father. And that you will continue to watch over all of your children. You will grant them the blessings that they need so that they may be able to continue on fulfilling their duties and serving and glorifying the most holy name. We pray, our Father, that you would bless your son who will teach your words this evening. Continue to grant him your spirit so that he may be able to teach your word with clarity so that all of us will be benefited in our services unto thee. We pray, our Father, that you will always be with your servants and none of us forget where all of our blessings come from so that we will continue to serve you until the end of our lives. We pray, our Father, that you would bless our children, always watch over them and protect them and give them the heart of love and a heart of understanding so that they too will continue to walk righteously before your holy presence. We need you in our lives, Father. We need you to guide us with all of the turmoil that is going on throughout the world. We need your guidance. We need your help to be able to overcome the obstacles that we encounter in this life so that we may be able to attain that eternal life that you promise unto your children. Our Lord Jesus Christ, we call on you, asking your Lord to please continue to take our prayers to the Father, asking the Father to hear our prayers and forgive our sins so that we can continue to serve you and our Father until the end of our lives. Our Father in heaven, please be with us throughout our Bible study. Send your Holy Spirit to open up our hearts of understanding so we may be able to understand your truth and walk righteously before your holy presence. We truly believe, our Father, that you've heard the prayers of your children this evening, that you've forgiven us for any shortcomings that we've committed because we ask everything in the name of thy son, Jesus. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, we know that many people call to the Lord Almighty God, especially even on behalf of those who may say that they belong to the Church of Christ, even if they are in the institution and even those who were taken out of the institution, they also call to the Lord Almighty God. But what is it that we should all be sure of? Is we have to take good care of our hearts towards the Lord Almighty God. What is it that God looks into? A man, according to the Holy Scriptures. And that is why it's important to really take good care of our hearts, because even King David, he even asked the Lord Almighty God to create in him a clean heart, as written in, in the book of Psalms 51, 10. So really, why is it that even the king, like King David, 
was the one who asked, creates in him a clean heart. According to the Bible, how does God look towards an individual, especially if he is set to lead God's nation? Let's start our studies in 1 Samuel 16, 7. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So what is this one thing that we should understand of how God God regards those whom he will choose to lead God's people or as to be true servants of the Lord Almighty God? Well, when God was choosing somebody to lead God's nation, what is it that God looks into? The heart. Not like how man looks. He looks at the physical stature. But God looks into one's heart. What is this one thing that we should strive so that we could have a clean heart? A heart that is acceptable before the sight of the Lord Almighty God. Let's read in Psalm 66, 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. So what is this one thing that we should consider, brothers and sisters, when we draw near to the Lord Almighty God, knowing that God looks into our hearts? Well, we should never allow ourselves to regard iniquity in our hearts. We should not allow iniquity to reign within our hearts. What's the danger of that? If we favor or regard sins, iniquities in our hearts, well, the Lord will not hear. So what happens to one's prayers when he calls to the Lord Almighty God? If he regards iniquity in his heart, let's read Proverbs 28, 9. One who turns away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination, according to what we have just read. What is so wrong? If an individual regards iniquity in his heart, instead of having a clean heart, he allows sin to reign in his heart. This individual, when he starts praying to the Lord Almighty God, what happens to his prayers towards the Lord Almighty God? It becomes an abomination towards the Lord Almighty God. And who are being referred to here? Those who turn away his ears from hearing the law. How do you think a person who regards sins and iniquity in his heart? Of course, the priority of that individual is no longer the laws of God, but the laws of man or what makes him happy or her happy even if it breaks the commandments of the Lord Almighty God. The sad thing, if that individual always remain in that kind of condition, his prayers or her prayers becomes abominable before the sight of the Lord Almighty God. How did the Bible describe to us those who turn their ears away from hearing God's laws, which is why their prayers become abominable before the sight of God. Let's read Zechariah 7, 11 through 13. But they refuse to heed, shrug their shoulders, and stop their ears so that they could not hear. Yes, they made their hearts like flint, 
refusing to hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent by his spirit through the former prophets. Thus great wrath came from the Lord of hosts. Therefore it happened that just as he proclaimed and that they would not hear. So they called out and I would not listen, says the Lord of hosts. How did the Bible show to us those who regarded sin and iniquity in their hearts? And that is why even their prayers became abominable. They turned from the law. Why is it that they turned from the law or the commandments of the Lord Almighty God? Because they stopped their ears so that they would not be able to hear. What happened to their hearts? It became like flint, refusing to hear the law. And the words which the Lord of hosts had sent by his spirit through the former prophets. Well, in our time, we know who are the former administrators. There are people who refuse to listen to the messenger of God and to the former administrator. Because they just want to stop up their ears and refuse to obey some of the other laws of the Lord Almighty God. Like, for instance, to love your neighbor as you love yourself, to respect your mother and your father, to love your brothers and sisters, and so many other things that we should consider so that we would be able to obey and follow God. Hence, if we do, then we know that God will hear our prayers. Now, what is it that God will do? Even Others will start to pray, but because they have an evil heart, they have a heart that is like flint, like what the Bible says. What is it that God says? It says the Lord of hosts there makes mention that just as he proclaimed and they would not hear. So they called out and I would not listen says the Lord of hosts. Why is it that God will not listen, even especially to those who may claim that they're members of the church of Christ, but yet they don't want to really renew their lives. They would want to conceal wickedness or iniquity in their hearts. Why is it that their prayers became abominable towards the, to the Lord Almighty God? Isaiah 1, 15 to 17. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek justice. Rebuke the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Why is it that others are not heard in their prayers now? They may even make prayers to the Lord Almighty God. What makes their prayers abominable before the sight of the Lord Almighty God? Well, when they disregarded the commandments of the Lord Almighty God. What is this one thing that God wanted these people to do? Cease to do evil. Put away evil of your doings before my eyes, God says. What are these evil things that they uh, were not following? Which is the reason why even if they make so much prayers before the sight of God, God refuses to listen to their supplication and to their prayers. Learn to do good. What is good? Romans 7, 12. The words of God is good and just as written in Romans 7, 12. So if the words of God is good and just, then we should practice doing things that are good and just is it good to hate your brother is it good to hate your sister no is it just to put people out of the synagogues without the due process that the bible teaches because we know that a person that is to be expelled as what is bound on earth is bound in heaven and what binds man on earth Brothers and sisters, let not truth and mercy or love, right, forsake you. Bind them around your neck. 
Proverbs 3, 3, and 1. So when truth and mercy and love is not accompanied with binding and loosening, we know that it's not in conformity with the teachings of God. Thou, you may say that you are in power. Thou, you may say that you were given this privilege. But if you abuse what God has given to you, it does not give you the the right to be above the laws of the Lord Almighty God. We should always be among those who may preach or proclaim the words of God and fulfill it as written in Colossians 1.25. So let us ask, what are some of the things that God would want the people of God to do, especially the leaders of God in the nation, in, in, inside his nation or the institution? We know, brothers and sisters, God wanted them to learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. So what would happen if they will not do this? Then even if they make many prayers, those many prayers that are being done in the house of worship, the committee prayers that are being done in so many group meetings, brothers and sisters, uh, the Bible says that... Um, even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourself. God's giving the opportunity so that they would be able to be accepted or we will be all accepted. Why is it that we should give heed to God when he's wanting us to reform our ways, to renew our ways of life, to follow his teachings and commandments? Isaiah 59, 2 and 3. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies, your tongue has muttered perversity. Why is it that we should allow ourselves to be cleansed, to stop doing evil, do what is good? Heed the plead of the widow, help the fatherless, rebuke the oppressor, and so forth, so that we will not be amongst those that God will not hear. What happens if we allow ourselves to remain in sin? Our sins serve as a partition wall. Even if we call to God, there's something that's blocking it. What is blocking our prayers? iniquities, sins. And what are some of the other sins? For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perversity. Now, if this is found in God's nation, how would you think, even if they will pray so much prayers to the Lord Almighty God, but God refuse to listen to their prayers. So let us Look into ourselves and see, brethren, if we are amongst those who are truly renewing our ways of life, living up to the standard of the Lord Almighty God, so that we can be sure that all our works will follow us when we rest in our journey, as written in the book of Revelation. So brothers and sisters, how about the hope of those who continue to do or live in sin and they die? How does the Bible describe their death or how does the Bible make mention of what kind of hope they have? Let's read Job 27, 8 to 9. For what is the hope of the hypocrite? Though he may gain much, if God takes away his life, will God hear his cry? when trouble comes upon him. So what is the danger upon those who may have gained so much wealth? And the Bible consider them as a hypocrite. Why? Because they are the ones first telling other brethren to do this, to do that. But they are the first one to break the commandments, the laws of the Lord Almighty God. What is so wrong if that is the kind of leader or preacher of God's word or an officer that may start leading other the people of God, but yet he is the first one to disregard the commandments of God, to obey the, the commandments of God. Well, if that individual is just a hypocrite, when he will die, if God takes away his life, will God hear his cry? 
when trouble comes upon him? Rhetorical question. We know that he won't be heard. So there's a danger amongst those who may reach their final destiny if ever they will die, but they have not really have come to the point of great repentance towards the Lord God. This question mark on the day of judgment, he or she might not be saved. So why would you put yourself in a danger or in a situation that you might have to face on the day of judgment why don't we already reform our ways renew our ways of life all go be governed by the laws and commandments of god so that we in case our life ends or the day of judgment arrive we can be sure of one thing that we will be amongst those who will be heard and we will be amongst those who will be saved why is it that there's there are those who are having a hard time even that they know that they are wrong even if they know that there's something that they have done as a mistake they still don't want to confess or to renew their ways of life before the sight of god what is wrong with that individual let's read it job 35 12 to 13. There they cry out, but he does not answer because of the pride of evil man. Surely God will not listen to empty talk, nor will the Almighty regard it. Why do you think that there are those who cannot really accept their mistakes? If, if, as long as they know that they are humans, all of us are subject to mistake, but they are not humble enough to uh, say to their fellow man that they have made a mistake or most of all they could not really even confess it to God that they are wrong because of pride it's evil if you are filled with pride right so if I were you I'll eat that pride chicken <laughs> or take that pride out so that you would not be amongst those or we will not be amongst those who will fall into what the bible says surely god will not listen to empty talk why empty talk because call and call to god but because you're filled with pride and you think you're better than everyone and they're all wrong and you're the only one right uh, empty talk you call and call he, he will not listen nor will the almighty regard it see sorry right it, it's a sorry status even if you may be famous even if you're in power even if you have so much wealth even if you have so much fame and glory but if your pride is just as evil as what the bible says all your prayers all your supplications they will not be heard by the lord almighty god do you know why let's read Proverbs 124 to 33. Because I have called and you refuse, I have stretched out my hand and no one regarded because you disdain all my counsel and would have none of my rebuke. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your terror comes, when your terror comes like a storm and your destruction comes like a whirlwind, when the stress and anguish comes upon you, then they will call on me but i will not answer they will seek me diligently but they will not find me because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the lord they would have none of my counsel and despise my every rebuke therefore they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled to the full to the full with their own fancies for the turning away of the simple will slay them and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. So how does the Bible demonstrate an individual who will be totally in need of God? But yet when that comes into his life, that he is in need of God, but because 
he did not really regard God's laws in his heart. In fact, he disregarded them and he even stopped up his ears and his heart became like flint that he became abominable even in his prayers because of his pride. Brothers and sisters, there will be a time that they will call to me, God says, but I will not answer. Why is it that God will not answer? Because when God was stretching out his hand to try to rebuke and correct, they disregarded his laws and commandments. So what is it that the Bible says? Then they will call to me in time when there are terror and when time that they are in need. But God said, I will not listen to their prayers and supplications. Think of that, brothers and sisters. Would we want to be amongst those who will be like, pleading for the help of God. But there seems like there is no one literally really listening to our prayers. Well, if you would want to be in that status, disregard all what God has been teaching you to do. But if you want that he will be able to bless you, like what we have read, brothers and sisters, for the turning away of the simple will slay them and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. So you have really a choice, a choice to be among those who will live in terror when there are problems that will come into your life that God will not be there for you. Or even if there are so many hardships and sorrows that may come into the life, God will listen to you. You will dwell in safely, safety. And you will be secure without fear of evil. Of course, all of us would want that will be always heard in our prayers to the Lord Almighty God. What is one of the teachings that were taught to us in these last days? That we should love one another. And if by chance our brothers, our sisters may have done wrong to us or we have done wrong to them, what is it that is instructed us for all of us to do, James 5, 16, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. What is instructed to all of us to do? If by chance we have sinned against our brothers or our sisters and the brethren that may have sinned against their brother or their sister, well, we have to confess our trespasses to one another and pray for one another. Oh, I did that. I pray that they will be among those who will be punished. Is that the right way of praying for your fellow man? Of course not. Because if you really love your brothers and sisters, um, you would learn to forgive them of their trespasses and what makes a prayer fervent well if we confess our sins to one another the effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much so to whom must we mostly confess our sins because we have sinned against him first john 1 9 Con if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, according to what we have read, beloved brothers and sisters, to whom should we really all the more confess our sins? To the Lord. Why is it that we should confess our sins to the Lord? Why, brothers and sisters, if we have done wrong to our fellow men, it's nothing wrong to confess our sins to our fellow men and be amongst those who will resolve the differences, correct? But why is it that we have to confess our sins to the Lord? To whom did we commit sin in the first place, brothers and sisters? Did we not commit sins, our sins towards the Lord Almighty God? And what is it that we obtain if ever we confess our sins to the Lord Almighty God? 28.13 of Proverbs. He who covers his sins will not prosper, but whoever confesses 
and forsakes them will have mercy. Brothers and sisters, what is it that we obtain if by chance we learn to confess our sins to God? Brothers and sisters, do you think that if a person confesses his sins to the Lord Almighty God in a true way, is that person still have a lot of pride? No. He has learned to set up or set away his pride. He or she accepted his or her wrongs. He or she humbled himself towards the Lord Almighty God. And if that is the case, he who covers his sins will not prosper, according to the Bible, but whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. So one who confess their sins to the Lord, there is something that he or she must do, must forsake the sin. So no longer living in that sin, he or she should completely renew his or her way of life. What is it that he or she obtains? Mercy. Do you want to have mercy or obtain mercy before the sight of God? Brothers and sisters, who is one who demonstrated in his prayers and begged for mercy because he confessed his sins to the Lord Almighty God? Psalms 51, 1 through 4. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgression. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from all my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. Who is one? who confess his sins to the Lord Almighty God. Though he may be in a position of being God's leader for his nation. Brothers and sisters, this is King David. What could we learn from King David? He's a king. But in the midst of all that, of having that power and authority over God's people, when he made a mistake, you could see how he humbled himself before the sight of God. He begged for mercy that his sins will be forgiven. And he had asked God to be merciful so that he would be cleansed. His sins may be blotted out. He even said, I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. You could see how a person really is humbled. And that's the reason why if you just continue reading that verse in 10, 51, 10, he says, create in me a clean heart and a renewed spirit. Do not take away the Holy Spirit from me. 51, 10, 11 of psalms so in order for the spirit of god to remain among those who lead god's people they should be the first ones to demonstrate before god that they confess their sins and so that those people under them will also learn to do the same and set aside our pride for the sake of the words of god for us to follow and obey so that we could obtain the mercy of God, the forgiveness of our sins, and we could bring the people of God in the right way of repentance for us to be forgiven for our sins. Now, there are two kinds of prayers, like what we are mentioned a while ago, one that is filled with pride, but this kind of prayer, we can see that even if this is a leader of God's nation, a king of Israel, you could see how he is so humble and how he really is so sorry when he has sinned towards God. How could you find out an individual who is not so sorry, but yet he thinks that he is so great because he is up there a preacher of the laws of God, but yet. He is not humble before the sight of God. He's not humble, but he's a one, he's a person that may be a hypocrite before the sight of God. Let's look at the two prayers that were done here in Luke 18:10. 
to 14, two men went up to the temple to pray. One, a Pharisee, and the other, a tax collector. The Pharisee stood up and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I, I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. So these are two kinds of people who prayed to the Lord Almighty God. But in uh, analyzing this, as our Lord Jesus Christ analyzed their prayers, the Pharisee was so self-righteous saying, I'm not like this tax collector. I'm not an adulterer. I, I do tithes. And he mentioned all of the things that he has done before the Son of God. And here comes the tax collector, uh, feeling so sorry and humble. He looked into himself. He said uh, that he, he is very sorry. He could not even look up to heaven because of the sins that he has done. But before the sight of our Lord Jesus Christ, he came out more just than those who are like the Pharisee, who did not know how to uh, look into their own self of their sins. They look at the sins of others while they themselves have sinned before the sight of the Lord Almighty God. So how else? Can we be forgiven for our sins? James 5, 14, 17 to 18. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Let's stop there. What is another way of receiving forgiveness of sin? If ever we have uh, sin before the sight of God. And if ever we are sick, let's call for those who may have the power or the authority to anoint us with oil and the prayer of those who have faith in the prayer of those who have anointed them, they will get well. And if they have sin, they will be forgiven for their sin. So what kind of prayer is it that we should always strive to have so that our prayers are truly heard as we are living in accordance to the righteousness of God. 17, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Who is this individual that prayed earnestly before the sight of the Lord Almighty God? And he was heard, Elijah. Let us be sure when we pray to our God, we pray earnestly and so that we will be able to receive what we ask for. If any one of you are sick, then you must pray earnestly to the Lord Almighty God. For those who may be sick, may they be healed by the power of the Lord Almighty God. It is through your faith that you will be healed. And if you have sinned, your sins will also be forgiven. So if by chance there are brethren out there, who are able to be moved with the words of God to repent in the right way or to So, beloved brothers and sisters, what is it that we should do if by chance uh, there are brethren out there? What is it that they should do if they have learned to really reform their ways of lives? What is this before the sight of God if ever we are able to convince them 
to follow the teachings of God. Let's read here in James 5, 19 to 20. Brethren, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. So do you think that if brothers and sisters that may have heard this lesson and they reform their ways of life or they renew their ways of life, they repented in a way that they already really stop doing the kinds of sins that may even hurt their fellow man brothers and sisters that individual is an indi that may have wandered from the truth will be brought back and because of that let him know that he who turns a sinner from error of his way will save a soul from death which death is that the second death the lake of fire revelation 2014 and cover a multitude of sins. So even the sins that were done, that were so many by others to those that they have done wrong to their fellow man, their sins will also be covered. They will be forgiven for as long as they too are amongst those who will reform and renew their ways of life so that all of us will be amongst those who will be accepted by God and we will receive also forgiveness of sin and most of all salvation when judgment day will come let us stand and let us pray dear father in heaven we are calling to you this very moment to thank you so very much for allowing us to hear your teachings and commandments you know fairly well what we pray for always are for our brethren who have been oppressed and for our brethren who have been cast away. We pray also for the ministry, for those people who are ministering upon your people in this last days. We ask that you please give us more knowledge, wisdom that comes from you, so that we will be able to shepherd our brethren in the proper way of magnifying your holy name. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for all your care. We know we are not worthy before you. We have sinned you. We have sinned against you in many different ways. But yet, O oh Lord, it is through means of looking into our hearts. If we are deeply sorry of what we have done, if we are amongst those who set aside our pride, we will be able to humble ourselves and confess our sins to you and beg for forgiveness. Cleanse us from our sins. Help us to be amongst those who will renew our ways of life. Bless all our brethren in the institution, especially even those may that be leading the institution. Help them to be the role model of following your teachings and commandments so that they will be able to bring all our brothers and sisters in the proper way of magnifying your name. They will be the first ones to also confess with one another to their brothers and sisters that they will resolve their differences so that everything will be well and we will be amongst those who will be considered as yours because we have set aside our pride. We have learned to do what you want us to do, which is to love one another, to forgive one another, to honor our father and mother. If we all do this, we know that we abide in following your teachings and commandments. Dear Lord Jesus, we beg also mercy on behalf of those who are sick, those who may be in the hospital bed, those who are in their sick bed, in the times of their needs. May you bring our prayers to our Father. May you remember them, dear Lord. May they be healed from their ailments. May they be cured and be brought home to their loved ones. That together we can always worship you together in spirit and in truth. We know that we have so much problems in this life. But, O oh Lord, we know you are our mediator, the throne of grace. And you can bring our prayers to our God so that we will be heard in our prayers. 
Father in heaven, we return to you and ask that you bless all our brothers and sisters. May you bless all those who support those who are truly in need. And may you be able to repay the goodness and kindness of our brothers and sisters that they too will be able to be blessed and also continue in the duties and obligations that thou bestowed upon each and every one of us. Father, we ask everything through means of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.